Hey there everyone, I'm 13 News Now meteorologist Rochelle here with your midday update for July 2nd, tracking Hurricane Elsa. Yes, we officially have our first hurricane of the 2021 season formed earlier this morning, Friday morning. Hurricane alerts are active in the Caribbean and I'm sure we'll have some updates to those as we go into the next couple of uh, hurricane updates in the next few hours. So U.S. impacts still to be determined, getting a little bit more uh, certainty as we look towards early and the middle part of next week for some possible impacts towards Florida. So really quickly do want to just remind everyone hurricane is used to describe tropical cyclone with 74 mile an hour sustained surface winds. So not the gust, but those sustained winds of 74 or more miles an hour. So taking a look at Elsa's wind history, you can see having those tropical storm uh, force winds between five o'clock Friday morning and 8 a.m. Friday morning. Elsa's strength increased about 15 miles an hour. Now they put out a special update at around 740, 745 on um, Friday morning to update us that Elsa had officially reached hurricane status again first hurricane of the 2021 season. So in order for Elsa to become a category two hurricane, it would have to increase its speed to at least 96 miles an hour. Now, right now, that doesn't look likely, but we'll continue to watch because there is some strengthening of Elsa anticipated in the next few days. So here's the latest 11 a.m. advisory sustained wind still at 75 miles an hour, currently moving over uh, parts of the Southern Caribbean. So areas like St. Lucia, St. Vincent, you're seeing the center of the storm just five miles north north of St. Vincent, but this storm thankfully is moving very quickly. So it's moving at 29 miles an hour, a little bit faster than when I saw you for yesterday's update here on YouTube and that pressure down to 995 millibars. And when the pressure decreases, that generally means that the storm is increasing in strength and intensity as well. So taking a look just at the satellite imagery, you can see from Guadalupe down through uh, Trinidad and Tobago, all seeing some impacts, maybe just some clouds or a few rain showers, but all of those islands also including Barbados. Now that storm is moving away from Barbados, but we're continuing to see those areas seeing impacts from Elsa this morning. Now, tropical Atlantic climate. Let's talk about that very quickly. On average, the Atlantic will see its first hurricane right around the middle part of August. It is the early part of July, so we are definitely running ahead of schedule. Let's talk about some other facts with Elsa. Of course, we know it made its mark as the earliest fifth name storm, fifth name Atlantic storm on record beating last year's East storm by five days. Now, another fact on Elsa is that only one other storm has formed farther east in the mid, excuse me, in the main development region this early in the year. And I'll talk about that MDR in just a second. And that was the 1933 Trinidad hurricane. So before they gave those, um, hurricanes and tropical systems actual names they would refer to them as those areas that were impacted by that storm so you have to go all the way back to 1933 to find another storm that became a tropical storm farther east in this region so what is the main development region? Let's talk about that. We're going to be seeing that for the area between 10 and 20 degrees north and 20 and 80 degrees west. Now in this area, we see the majority of those African waves originate and form and those waves result in the majority of major hurricanes in the Atlantic basin. Not all of them, but a good majority of them will form in this area. You're seeing from Western Africa all the way through the Caribbean and then back all the way towards uh, Central America. And it does include parts right around uh, northern areas of South America as well. So current tropical alerts with that 11 a.m. advisory, you do see Barbados no longer under a hurricane warning like it was tropical storm warning as that system pulls away. St. Vincent, also St. Lucia, still in that hurricane warning. Grenada right now in a tropical storm watch. Martinique and also Dominica included in a tropical storm warning. Zooming out, you can see quite a few more countries now under either tropical storm or hurricane alerts as we move through the next couple of days. We're talking about Haiti under a hurricane warning warning for the southern coast of Haiti toward the Dominican Republic uh, border there and also a hurricane watch for southern parts of the Dominican Republic north coast Dominican Republic currently only under a tropical storm watch and then we do have alerts all the way back to Jamaica currently a hurricane watch in place for Jamaica but also a tropical storm warning which they might need to upgrade to a hurricane warning depending on that track. 
Speaking of the track, let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. So currently that system, ELSA, is 675 miles east-southeast of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic and also, as I mentioned, five miles north of St. Vincent, the island of St. Vincent. Winds 75 miles an hour gusting to 90 miles an hour. So I do want to put a pause on this very quickly to show you something. Winds right now, 75 miles an hour. But as Elsa moves back over that open water, it's expected to strengthen even more before impacting um, another country. Right now, it does look like Haiti has a good chance of seeing some pretty direct impacts from Elsa, from the center of the storm, that center of the storm moving very close to the southern uh, coast of Haiti. But remember, we do see those impacts from the storm well away from the center. So if the center ends up moving over Haiti, the Dominican Republic is going to be getting impacts from the system, just not as intense as wherever uh, those impacts move from that center part of the storm. So if the storm moves over land, it's going to weaken just a bit. And then as it continues on its track, remember, there's still some uncertainty with exactly where the storm is going to go. That's why they have this cone. So as the system moves over Cuba, because most of the computer models have it moving over Cuba. So as it moves over Cuba, it's expected to weaken some more eventually potentially still could move a little bit farther out into the Gulf of Mexico potentially impacting for Florida toward the middle part of next week so after the 4th of July holiday so right now infrared satellite this shows you the tops of the clouds and we start to see more of those intense colors those reds burgundies and purples when we have higher cloud tops or taller thunderstorms more developed thunderstorms you can see this is the past 12 hour loop moving over Barbados and currently moving just to the north the center of the storm just moving to the north of St. Vincent, and you're also seeing just to the south of St. Lucia as well. So again, remembering those impacts far away from the center of the storm, Trinidad and Tobago up towards Guadalupe, all seeing at least some impacts from this storm, but definitely not as intense as those uh, people that are currently living in St. Vincent and also St. Lucia and the folks in Barbados from a little bit earlier this morning, definitely seeing some very intense impacts from this hurricane. Water vapor imagery, the tans showing you where the dry air is, Elsa just powering through like a bulldozer, not even worried about uh, that dry air whatsoever. And this teal color indicating the moist air associated with Hurricane Elsa. So let's talk about sea surface temperatures. Uh, hurricanes, tropical systems, they need at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit for them to sustain strength or to become stronger. When it comes to Elsa in this part of the uh, Atlantic Basin heading into the Caribbean Sea, 84 degrees right now moving uh, just north of uh, St. Vincent, 84 degrees, 85 degrees. So this system has got a lot of juice to feed on when it comes to these sea surface temperatures. And as it continues its trek off to the west, it will continue to have very warm waters for it to sustain at least some strength. But remember, interactions with land and uh, tropical systems don't usually mix. So it is going to weaken some if it interacts with land, whether it's with Haiti or with Cuba um, as well. But you're seeing 84 degrees here, 84, 87 between Jamaica and, Q excuse me, and Haiti. That's what those water temperatures are right now. And then once it moves off of the northern coast of Cuba, you're seeing 85 degrees for those uh, water temperatures right now just off of the Florida Keys. So lots and lots of warm waters for Elsa to feed off of. And something that would limit Elsa's strengthening would be wind shear, which is a change in wind direction or wind speed with height. And I've indicated uh, with this graphic where the wind shear is that would uh, inhibit some of that strengthening and you're seeing that to the north and Elsa not expected to go up there so we're not seeing anything to really inhibit Elsa strengthening besides potential land interaction so we'll have to keep an eye on that as well so keeping an eye on the tropics right now all we have Hurricane Elsa no other areas of interest or invest out there currently but we'll continue to watch the tropics as we move through the rest of the season remember it's only July 2nd we still have quite a ways to go so here's where we are as far as Atlantic hurricane names Elsa first hurricane of the season next name on the list would be Fred right now not watching anything that could become Fred so keeping our main focus right now on Elsa so taking a look at this chart of the uh, Atlantic hurricane season peak of the season not until September 10th so we still have multiple months where we'll be continuing to track the Atlantic Basin uh, right here on YouTube and also on our social media pages speaking of social media if you're interested you can go ahead and follow me over on Twitter whenever updates come out 
out for the tropics. Twitter usually sees them first and then we'll do a full update on YouTube uh, here on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested, you don't have to, no pressure. You can follow me on Twitter, underscore Rochelle TV. That's where I'm most active on social media. We're also active 13 News Now on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. So make sure you're following us on those platforms for some more tropical information from our other meteorologists, our other four meteorologists on the team. Make sure you're subscribed to us here on 13 News Now. I want to thank you for watching this video and please share it if you did find some useful information. If you have family or friends in some of those areas that will be impacted by Elsa, please share this video with them to keep them safe because that's why we do this. We want to keep everybody informed and also safe through the hurricane season. I hope you all have a good weekend and I'll probably see you for another update tomorrow.